Hi, I'm Danny with BuyRadarDetectors.com. I'm here today with Bob from Vail Corporation. Bob is known online as the Vail Guy. He's the president of Vail Corporation and he's in charge of product development. Um, in this video, we're going to be talking about his product, Vail, and uh, the new version, Vail G5. We're going to talk about what's new and how to use Vail in general. Bob, tell us about Vail. Well, uh, G5 is a, a waterborne polymer system designed to absorb infrared that comes from a police laser or police LIDAR as it's known and also work with uh, minimizing the uh, ability to have your plates read by automatic license plate recognition systems and IR photo enforcement red light cameras and speed cameras things along those now lines. Now is the IR properties of, of the new G5 version new to Vail or is that something that, that um, the previous version did as well? Yeah, yes, the previous version did as well but the thing that's unique about G5 versus G4 is it could be applied directly to license plates now uh, and also plate covers and it, it is now optically compatible with other products like the OnTrack Photo Blur, which I think we're going to talk about later, or the Super Protector. So uh, th these are the enhancements to G5. And with the proliferation now of infrared photo enforcement ALPR systems, much more than they have been in the past, we think it's important to bring that awareness to the uh, you know, drivers. That's great. Um, now let's back up a little bit. Why is it important for a driver to use a product like Vail? Uh, okay. The basis of Vail is still very much the same, the core principles of Vail, which is to uh, reduce the targeting range of police LIDAR. And the police laser, for those who don't know what police laser is, it's uh, different than police radar. And uh, it's used typically at a greater distance than radar is. And with police laser, you're specifically targeted and picked out of a, a pack of automobiles. Radar is less, uh, you know, uh, selective in that regard, it requires the officer to determine which vehicles are responsible for the speed if you're in a pack of cars. Laser specifically can target you. And uh, what it does is it reduces the targeting range and the, the idea is it gives you time if you're speeding, going beyond the speed limit, to slow down safely. Uh, because with laser, without any kind of protection, uh, pretty much by the time, if you had a radar detector that can detect laser, by the time that sucker goes off, you've already been clocked. So Vail gives you back what you would otherwise not have, which is three to five seconds or more of reaction time. And that's all you really need if you're in being an attentive so driver. So it's, it's much harder for a radar detector to, to sniff out a, la a signal from a laser gun than from a radar gun. So Vail is buying you time to react. Is that e essentially... I think that's part of it, but you know, even a very good detector that can sense very rea uh, react quickly to a police laser is by the time your detector, it's almost like IO, instant on radar, that from a hidden position, that you know, you'll go off, even, like if you're the only car driving on the road at the time and you get hit with IR, even the very best radar detector won't give you that warning. So laser, police laser is basically always like instant on radar. Mm -hmm. And since it's done from a distance, in fact, I was just reading about Georgia where I, well, that's another story we'll talk about later, but they can use, <laughs> police laser from the distance of 2,000 feet uh, to write tickets. Some states are less or fewer distance, but in Georgia it's 2,000 and, and they can even clock you beyond 2,000 feet. They just can't issue you tickets. Wow. Uh, so again, it's always farther away. At night, you may not even see the officer. Even during the day, if they're far enough ahead on the road, you won't even see them and they'll just pinpoint you out of a pack from a great distance. And uh, you know, when your detector is alerting, you're already are being clocked, just like with instant on radar. So the idea of Veil is to buy you that additional time by making it harder on the laser gun to actually get a reading as quickly as they normally would from that distance. Now, how is Veil applied to your vehicle? How does it work? Is, this is a, a paint that is a coating that's yes. applied. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an acrylic coating here. We give you two brushes uh, and here's your container here and you, you, know, you certainly open it up, you, you treat your headlights and fog lights, any really reflective portion on the automobile, and you, know, you have them clean, and then you dip your brush in, and then you apply it, and we can you know, possibly so do that later and show you. Anything reflective on your vehicle you apply Veil to? You, uh, police laser, they usually target your headlights or your front license plate. Correct. So you suggest just the headlights or a license plate cover? Right, or the fog lights Okay. Uh, as well. Any, anything, you know, the, the headlights typically have parabolic reflectors, 
So even a headlight that is on an angle, you would think, well, it's going to scatter the laser away. That's not really true because the plastic is, or glass is transmissive. So the laser light comes through mm -hmm. and it's collected in the parabolic you know, lens and then it's reflected back out and, and intensified. So what Veil vale does, it's called w, a double attenuation. So the light comes through, is attenuated or absorbed to a great degree, and then it reflects back out and it's absorbed again. So it's hitting it twice effectively. And you know you basically get a 99 or more percent absorption of your laser. So basically, uh, you're you're eliminating the most common or primary uh, targets of your automobile with veil, as well as uh, the ones that are the most reflective. And basically, what's left over is what I call the residual laser cross section of an automobile, which is a fancy way of saying anything that's not treated with veil that has some reflection, whether that's a bumper things along those lines. Some people put this on chrome. Again, I don't necessarily, some of the complex patterns of your uh, grills, you know, in the front may not really need it, but if there's larger selections of veil, you gotta think about things that are perpendicular to the road, which reflect directly back to the laser. Sure. So uh, that's the kind of thing that, that, you know, this is what we help with. That's great information. Um, if someone already has a laser jammer or is planning on buying a laser jammer, sure. do you recommend that they also use Veil or is a laser jammer on its own good enough? Uh, yeah, well, first off, uh, philosophically, I'm a big fan uh, and, and a believer of a defense in depth, uh, multi-layer uh, defense uh, in countermeasures. No one countermeasure, and that even means Veil, is foolproof. No detector is foolproof, no jammer is uh, foolproof. Uh, so the idea of running multiple layers, and I even include ways in that mix, which we're going to talk about later, uh, is going to maximize your chances. Being also an attentive driver. Uh, laser jammers are, are a wonderful thing. Uh, in my car in particular, I use them. I have a big silver metallic uh, sedan uh, or a Corvette. You know, I've shown with a, a dark Corvette. Uh, you can oftentimes get away with a jammer, but not, not a lot of cars are, have the profile of a Corvette. Every car is going to be different. Uh, some cars are going to justify having a jammer more than others, but I certainly recommend uh, pairing Veil with a jammer in a, in a layered defense approach. Uh, some of the newer laser guns, which we may talk about later today, are much, much more sophisticated with their optics and with their uh, pulse algorithms, which we're going to talk about again later, uh, that slice through many jammers. Uh, and mm -hmm. these jammer companies, some more than others, are being successful at countering these. But when they are not successful, you have what is called instant punch through, which means as if you're driving with no jammer at all. Uh, you could be, you know, 3,000, 4,000 feet away, and you know the jammer doesn't see the signal or it can't interfere with it, and you're immediately. So it's, it's common ready. that a laser gun is not going to jam all the way uh, permanently. It's, you're going to get an alert laser with jammer. a laser yeah. gun. Uh, or with a laser jammer, you're going right. to get an alert. Uh, but at some point, there's going to be punch through. Often. It, often you're going to see punch through, and the police officer is going to be able to get your speed. Right. And, and some other dynamics, too. We often see when we go to meets, like uh, enthusiasts get together, mm -hmm. and they test their setups. Uh, it's not uncommon to see ha laser jammer heads a little bit mounted improperly, mm -hmm. slightly off axis. And that has a significant impact, again, uh, diminishing. Sure. Another dynamic that can be difficult are some vehicles have their headlight systems far out, you know, and you really can only mount the laser jammer heads low. And, you know, it just can't reach. So the idea of veil in that case, to get back to your question, is, you know, you eliminate those far areas of reflection and it allows the jammers to do that, you know, their work more efficiently. So again, I'm a big fan of defense in depth and I strongly recommend uh, incorporating them. The other thing you should also keep in mind is jammers are being outlawed more in, in uh, more states. So I think we may That's be true. up to 11 or more. I'm not exactly sure specifically. You'd have to check with your local uh, you know, uh, laws to know where they are banned. And the other component you have to think about with jammers is more th the newer laser guns are very good at det uh, indicating a jam code. So even if you're successful or even if you're not successful, uh, jamming, the, the officer will be alerted that they're being interfered They'll with. They'll know that they've been jammed. Correct. And you can get a ticket for that if you're in one of these states. Correct. Now, Veil vale really doesn't give a jam code because it's stealth. It's working differently. It's than a passive the product. Correct. And it's absorbing, whereas a jammer has to correctly in, you know, interfere properly from a timing perspective. And those guns are getting very good at determining that. So you got to really you know, balance that, you know, think about those types of things. So. 
So it sounds like Veil is a great complementary product to a, a radar detector or any type of system that you may already have. It's a great product to add to the mix um, and it's going to give you even more protection if that's what you're looking for. Right. And we, you know, we also find that some people go you know, back to the jammers. You know, jammer heads, like a two head system, mm -hmm. what do they run? $600? 600 Give or take. Yep. And a four head system, $1,200? Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have the installation, now, uh, which could be, you know, if you're going to a good installation place and they do it very well, could be another $1,000, $750, dollars So you're in for anywhere from 1300 to two grand. And if you think about Vail, uh, it, it's what, $98, $98, dollars. it's a very small price compared to an overall system. Right. So for, for the extra insurance that it adds, it's... To me, it's a no-brainer. It is. And, and, you know, it may be some people like to start with it first to see how well they do. You drive it in the real world and, you know, depending on where you're traveling, how frequently you see laser and, and what have you. Uh, and if you feel you need more protection, uh, you can always augment with it with the jammer when you feel it's appropriate. It's great information, Bob. Is there anything else you'd like to add uh, about Laser Veil G5? Uh, well, yeah, we can talk a little bit about what you know, what, how it's different from G4. G4 was more of a solvent-borne system. It was uh, flammable to some extent, which made it harder to ship. If uh, for those who are familiar with G4, uh, the packaging was much larger and uh, not as efficient as this. This is a, a lot smaller uh, package. Uh, it's less expensive to ship. It's very easy to ship internationally. I think you sell. Uh, have we international do. accounts. And it was ex more expensive to ship the old version uh, right. internationally. Declarations, uh, that kind of stuff. And now since it's waterborne, uh, also the G4, you could remove it with uh, ammonia. And that can be a little caustic for people that are only working with ammonia. It's pretty strong to breathe and things like that. Right. Uh, this is now, we've reversed the chemistry, so now you can remove it with vinegar, which is a white vinegar. You know, I did a video removing veil from a photo blur, and I was really impressed with how easy it was to remove. It was, it was a piece of cake. Yeah, it's, 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 it's uh, I think we're, we're, I'm very happy with where we are. Uh, and it can go directly on plates. It, you know, if you get it on your car inadvertently, you know, G4 also used to flow a lot. It used to be a lot thinner, if you recall. And if you set it up, you know, oftentimes people would tape off with like painter's tape mm -hmm. and do the headlight or they sure. take them out. G4 is much thicker uh, and it doesn't flow and ro run as much. And, you know, it's easier to apply without having to worry about it getting on, you know, a car itself or painted surface. But if you do inadvertently, it doesn't stain and you can actually just use a damp towel or something because it's waterborne you know, just like a regular household latex paint. So we're really happy about that. So, well. Uh, yeah, we're really impressed with the product and the feedback that we've gotten on it so far is, has been tremendous. You guys did a, a fantastic job. Thank you. And we're not stopping either. We're going to, you know, Veil is something we continue to refine. And, uh, you know, I'm a perfectionist, you know, sometimes and, and I'm This is a mature on. product now. It's been around for um, many years. Yeah, we started offering this product in 2004. Uh -huh. Uh, we first tested with, if you remember SML when they were in, uh, doing their testing, we didn't offer the product publicly until we knew we were successful and we had to take it to a, you know, somebody who was an expert who could really test it. And, right. and we had 10 years of, of development even before then. We started Veil vale in 90, you know, early 90s when LTI came out with the first laser gun. And I knew that the dynamics were changing significantly. And at the time, in fact, if you remember, you've been in this business for a really long time that uh, there weren't even laser detectors out there, if you recall. I do. And, uh, and I remember very vividly, uh, Car and Driver did a review on uh, these, these guns, if you recall, and they screwed around with putting multiple headlights on, if you remember, do you remember that? Like a Tucker, they put a third light in, they did these high beams, and they were able to overwhelm the initial early generation one laser jammers with lights to cut down. They were trying huh. all different types of homemade solutions. I really appreciated that. And then I, then I began to think about, you know, what could we really do to reduce, you know, the, uh, the efficacy or the, and uh, this is what started our G5. So yeah, we're up to 11 years since we've been selling it. That's so. Fantastic. I mean, the, the product's been around for a long time. The product works great. There's a lot of history, a lot of reviews online. You can, you can see that the product works great. And Bob has, himself has put hundreds of thousands of miles on uh, testing this product and various radar detectors. As well as dollars. Yeah, and dollars. <laughs> sure. That really hurts, but uh, no. And I also want to say that Danny's one of my favorite uh, uh, 
uh, retailers in this industry, really. He's just a terrific guy, and he knows Vale very well, and I can't recommend uh, Danny enough for those who would like to you know, purchase Vale or any other of these products we're going to be talking about. Your support and knowledge of these products is really quite, and you're very much committed to this industry, so I can't uh, recommend Danny as, as, uh, enough. Well, thank you very much, Bob. I guess that's going to wrap up our uh, conversation about uh, introducing Vail G5. Um, check out our website if you have any questions at byradardetectors.com or our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash byradardetectors. And um, check us out. Yeah, drive, drive safe and drive, drive smart, safe. right? <laughs> Take care. <laughs>